Hi, we are going to talk about bonding. Now, in a first year chemistry class, there are three basic types of bonds that you learn, ionic, covalent, and metallic. Um, this is just a really quick overview of the characteristics so that you can demarcate between the different types of bonds. Let's start with ionic. So an ionic bond is between a metal and a non-metal. Um, and what's key to this is that they are ions. You're going to have the positive cation and the negative anion. An example of this is sodium chloride. Um, now this compound, if we're being really specific for ionic compounds, is called a formula unit. Be really careful on this. You would never use the word molecule with an ionic compound. Um, I've seen at the collegiate level, students just hugely embarrassed because they said the molecule sodium chloride. If you're not sure what word to say, the only safe word for anything uh, when you're bringing atoms together is compound. Um, but to be very specific, you now know formula unit, the formula unit of sodium chloride. So it's um, the sodium lost an electron became a sodium plus one, the chlorine gained an electron became chloride, which is a minus one, the positive negative attract, and that creates the ionic bond. Now that positive negative attraction um, that's called an electrostatic force. You can think about it like magnets. It really is that positive and negative, a strong, and it's a super strong attraction. Um, if I were to rank these, ionic is the strongest of the bonds, second is metallic, third is covalent. Covalent is the weakest. Um, so super, super strong attraction between the positive and negative, just like magnets. Um, now, some characteristics. So ionic bonds can conduct only when dissolved in water. So I put aqueous, when salt's dissolved in water, it will conduct, and when it is a liquid, because it allows for um, electrons to flow. It will not conduct as a solid. It won't conduct as a solid or as a gas. Um, and then brittle, um, this is, they're brittle, and if you hit them, they break on straight lines. And here's the reason why. Uh, is that positive negative attraction. If you have sodium chloride, um, excuse me, sodium chloride, then uh, let's do a sodium chloride and a, a sodium chloride. So let's take a hammer and I'm going to hit this. I hit it. Well, the positive negative are attracting. This is actually going to shift down one. Let's say that I hit it hard enough that it shifts down one and it can still attract uh, between that chlorine and that sodium. There's a slight attraction between them. Um, so the reason why it breaks on straight lines is to maintain um, more positive negative attractions. Um, so they're brittle, break on straight lines. Uh, let's see here. While I'm at it, having written um, that salt uh, as a group of salts, that right there um, has what's called, it's a lattice structure. I'll add this. I forgot to write it down. I'm glad that I just remembered. It has a lattice crystal. That lattice structure would be called a lattice crystal. And that um, also has what's called a lattice energy. Now here's the cool thing about the lattice energy. There's um, an amount of energy, potential energy, between the sodium chloride. But when you bring a lot of sodium chlorides together, there's actually a little bit of attraction between the chlorine from one compound and the sodium of another compound. There's a little bit of attraction there. So if you add up all of the energy of an entire crystal lattice, so all of these sodium chlorides in one great big clump of salt, um, the sum of the energy is actually greater that total energy is greater than the individual sums of the compounds, which tells us there's an interaction. There's a little bit of um, an attraction between the compounds themselves, and that's the lattice energy. Um, if you want to find lattice energy, watch the Coulomb's Law. Um, watch the Coulomb's Law video, and it talks about um, how to determine greater lattice energies. Okay, um, these are also really hard. Salts are hard. Uh, you have really high melting points and boiling points as an example, sodium chloride, just to melt it is going to melt at over 900 degrees. Wow. Um, and then of course that lattice energy. I used a term here. I want to write it down. A really kind of lazy, fast chemistry term for ionic compounds is salts. Uh, so whenever you hear a chemist say, oh, it's a salt, they're just saying it's an ionic compound, a metal and a non-metal. Okay, covalent compounds. 
uh, these are huge uh, for us because so much of biological systems, um, they, they're composed of covalent compounds. Um, now, a covalent compound is between a nonmetal and a nonmetal, and this is where we have sharing of electrons. You'll want to watch the Lewis dot structure. Lewis dot, that's how we show a sharing of electrons, and that's the bond that holds the um, electrons together. Uh, an example of this would be H2O, hydrogen's a nonmetal, oxygen's a nonmetal. Just a little reminder, hydrogen's in the alkali earth metal, uh, group one, but it's not a metal. That's a common mistake that students make. I was purposeful in choosing this. I want you to know hydrogen is a nonmetal. It is not a metal. Um, and the word for this is molecule, molecule. Um, there's a misconception just in general society that you can call anything a molecule, but that's not true. Um, Molecules are only for covalent compounds, sharing of electrons. Um, these do not conduct electricity, but there is an exception to that, polar covalent. Um, polar covalent compounds, they don't share electrons equally, and you can watch a video on polar bonds. Um, they don't share electrons equally, which gives a partial negative, partial positive. So instead of a full on positive, full on negative, there's a slight positive and a slight negative on the side of the compound, which is, allows it to slightly conduct. So for all intent and purpose, we say covalent compounds do not conduct, but I do want you to know that there is an exception. Polar covalent compounds slightly conduct because they have a partial positive and a partial negative on them. Water would be an example of that. Um, they are very soft, so you're thinking like oils, waxes, um, you can think of what you have in your pantry, your coconut oil, your canola oil, those are going to be covalent compounds. Um, and hence they have low melting points and boiling points. Think about canola oil in your pantry right now. At room temperature, it's a liquid. So um, it tells us that it is, um, it's not, it's intermolecular forces aren't as strong. Um, okay, and that's in comparison to like the lattice energy, uh, which is huge just to melt the ionic uh, compound, you have to bring that up to 900 degrees, whereas canola oil has already melted at room temperature, um, so what, maybe 70 degrees. Okay, metallic bonds. This is the last uh, major type of bonding that you'll learn in a first year chemistry class. It's between metals and metals, so an example here would be pure copper. We can also have alloys. Um, I'll talk about that in different videos for you. You can look that up. The, um, the uh, what holds these uh, these mat these metals together is called a sea of electrons, um, and I'll talk that about that in more detail. Uh, you can look specifically at at videos for metallic bonding. So just remember, sea of electrons, delocalized electrons. You have the kernels of the uh, nuclei and the electrons. So cool that they are going to ebb and flow and move on top of all of those uh, nuclei kernels, those positive kernels. Uh, metallic bonding, of course, it conducts both heat and electricity, so that's why we use metal pans. They conduct heat, um, and then electricity, we use it for wires, uh, our electrical water, wires. Metals are hard. There are a few exceptions to this. The group one uh, metals, alkali metals, they cut like butter. They're soft, but for, again, majority intent purpose, you're going to say that they're hard. Metals are malleable, that means that they're bendable, so we can form them into the shape of a pan. And they're also ductile. Ductile means that you can pull it and string it. So think about taffy. If you're making taffy and you pull it, we can do that with metal as well as ductile. You can pull it as a, you can thread it. Um, and then of course, really high melting points and boiling points. So really quick overview, there you have it, the three types of bonding. Good work.